Hi, Pathfinders. It's time we talked about irons, okay? The requirements are what type, um, no, show that you've ironed a shirt or a blouse and folded it properly or a skirt or a coat and press it. Well, first of all, one's being ironed and one's being pressed, and what does that mean? And then one of the questions above was, why is it important to remove a garment from the dryer immediately following the drying cycle? Remember I did two shirts? Well, this is the one that was not removed right away, okay? And the difference is, it's just a lot more wrinkled, okay? It's not a big deal because I'm going to iron both of them. Just the other one has less ironing to do. But if you're not going to iron a shirt, the sooner you remove it and hang it, don't just remove it and put it on the bed or put it on a chair because that doesn't work. <laughs> you might as well left it in the dryer. You've got to hang it up, all right? But this one here was left in a wad just so we could iron it and you could see what it was. All right, so let's talk about irons. Now, irons are all kinds of things. You think an iron is an iron, and most of you, when you think of an iron, you think of this. This is a Black & Decker Classic. There you go. It does steam. See these holes? That's for steam. The water goes in here. Not a very expensive iron, maybe $30. But there's these kinds of irons. This is a little travel iron. It also has steam. This also costs about $30, a little less. But I have maybe five irons for different functions. I have this one here, which is quite heavy, old fashioned one. I want to press. This is a good iron for pressing. I have one that's an Oslo iron that stands up all by itself when you set it down and it turns itself on and off. It's got a memory. So if I'm doing something where I'm ironing all day, like I'm quilting, and I don't want to have to remember to turn off and on the iron, that's a good iron for that. A friend of mine has a $350 iron. It's like, whoa! And it does all kinds of fancy stuff. It has a water reservoir and all kinds of things. I also have a little iron that's about this big for teeny tiny little pieces. Don't use it very often. But we're gonna use this iron because this is the one most of you are gonna have, all right? So now we gotta talk about ironing boards and ironing surfaces. I'll put this out of my way. Well, there's lots of kinds of ironing surfaces. This is an ironing surface here. This is actually for my quilting. It's a little travel cutting and ironing surface for cutting pieces with a rotary cutter and ironing on this side. All right, little bitties. Then I have an ironing surface that's a little bigger. But look at this, it's got grid marks. If I want something very square or very round, this helps me do that. And it just sits on a table. You know, just set it on a table and you can iron with it. Now, I have made myself an ironing surface. That's what this is. You can see it's a piece of board. It's two foot by four foot. And then I put batting on it and then cotton fabric. Why would I need that? Well, if you're going to iron something big and flat, which I do when I do quilts or pillowcases, anything where I'm working, I'm sewing with something very flat, this is great. That big gigantic Pathfinder scarf you saw at Oshkosh, we used these to iron the seams as they came off the sewing machine. We had an assembly line. We sewed, ironed, and sewed, and it was one continuous piece because the fabric was so long. You'd start here, iron it, and the Pathfinders did the ironing, and some of the adults did the sewing. We had a few Pathfinders who did the sewing, but mostly the Pathfinders did the ironing. And we used surfaces like this. But, let me turn this around so it's prettier. <laughs> Most of you are going to use something like this. This is an ironing board. It is pretty utilitarian. I wanted to go over what it does. First of all, it's adjustable. These make the legs fold up or come out. And you can adjust how tall or short it is. That means it can be due to your height. Don't try to iron at your dad's height or your little brother and sister's height. Get it to your height so that it is about the height of your elbow, a little higher than your waist. That's a pretty good level. Now, 
this one here doesn't have a cover on it because I'm going to show you how to put a cover on. All right. It's metal. Sometimes they're wood. If you have a very old one, it'll be wood. And some are a little shorter and some are longer. There's even some that are mounted into a wall and fold out in a laundry room. So I'm going to put this up. Now, there's a square end and a pointed end. If you're right-handed, you want the square end on the right side. If you're left-handed, you want it on the left side, okay? Now, I can't iron on this metal surface. If I put a very hot iron on this metal surface, the metal will get hot and everything will scorch. So there's a pad that goes on here. Now, there's lots of kinds of pads. And like you saw with the one that I made, it's just batting with fabric, cotton fabric. But generally, most people like to use one that's this coating because it's more, it reflects the heat up and makes things not stick. All right? So it's made kind of funny. It's got elastic. Okay? So I put it on the end, pull it back. And then grab the other end, sort of like a fitted sheet. I hold it onto the bottom and I try to put it on the end. That's not too bad. Fit there. Then I bring that around the side and I bring it around the other side. And that's pretty good. Except, it turns out that as you use it, it wants to slide around, it wants to move. So if you have some of these, these are little bitty short suspenders, They're like little suspenders that you can put on the back. So let me turn this on its end. So I can take one of these and clip it to here. Make sure you get it down nice and firmly, not right on the very edge. Bring this over. one here and you can put them all the way down your ironing board okay and I'm not gonna take time to do that but you get the idea that'll just keep it from shifting on you all right so now this is way too high for me to adjust it there's these two little levers are in not sure if you can see them okay I pull those towards the ironing board and put it at the height I need. And that's about right for me, all right? So there's an ironing board. Now there's other ironing things that you will need to pay attention to. Okay, that was my ironing board. We've talked about our iron. By the way, if you're gonna do some pressing, you're gonna need one of these. This is for pressing the shoulders of a jacket. It is wool and cotton, fairly hard but it's all fabric inside. But it's got a contour, so you can do the shapes on a shoulder, okay, to get it nice and the right shape, all right? So that's what that is. Now, sometimes you wanna use starch or sizing. I got some different things here to show you. When you go to the laundry and ask them to press a shirt, they'll ask you if you want sizing or starch, and they'll ask you how stiff you want it okay so let's look at this starch this is starch that you mix up yourself all right and there's a guide on the back to how much starch it says for light you do six cups of water for one cup of the starch if you want extra heavy you use it straight mostly i do medium and it wants four cups of water to one cup of starch well i usually don't need a whole four cups of quart so I will do two cups of water and half a cup of starch. And it goes in an old spray bottle, okay? It's lots easier if you have it in a spray bottle, all right? So you can make up your starch. Sizing, you end up buying. Difference is, one, starch is cheaper and it's stiffer generally. Sizing doesn't flake. It turns out that if you put starch on things and it doesn't soak in well, or you put too much on, you'll find these little white flakes that you have to brush off when you're finished ironing. It doesn't hurt anything, but they're a little annoying. Now, there's this product here, which I've never used. 
It's just called Faultless Lux Finish. Doesn't tell you what it is. My guess is it's sizing. Now, this is called Best Press. This is not starch and it's not sizing. It's for, it smells really good. It adds a really pretty scent to your clothes. So like if you iron a pillowcase when you put your head on your pillow, it smells really, really nice. And it works really well for some things. So you want it a little stiff, but not very much. You don't want to use starch. I like it for a few things, but it's expensive. So I don't use it very often. All right. So there's my starches. We've talked about irons and we have a board. So next we have to iron our shirt, right? So we're gonna iron a shirt without a shirt board because I don't own one because I don't usually use one. But I might explain what one's like later on and you can see for a woman's blouse, usually you want to have a little ironing board that's about that wide, about that long that you can slide the sleeve on so you don't get a crease on the sleeve. But we're not gonna do that. So I'm gonna turn off the camera, set myself to iron, you know, all my stuff in the right place, iron plugged in, all that kind of stuff, and come back, all right? 